Hello everybody, how are you today? Another Friday lunchtime learning session and it's uh, great to have you all here. I hope you're all well. Um, I had the Business Book Awards uh, shortlisting last night, which was all very exciting. And congratulations to everybody who is who was shortlisted and in the Abu group. Fantastic. We had lots of women, um, which is uh, which was just uh, fantastic. And I, and I will say now that 45% of the entries this year, more than 45% of our entries this year was from women authors. So um, I could not be happier about that, unless of course we get to 50% or more, um, which of course would also be great. Uh, so um, today I have with me the wonderful Dr. Anne Whitehouse, um, who is a, a scientist turned female power alchemist, which is an amazing change and yet not. Um, Anne is also the author of a fabulous book called Call Back Your Power, um, which you must read. And so Anne, do you want to fill us in on your background and how you turned from scientist to alchemist? Oh, absolutely. Well, um, <laughs> I do kind of talk about this a little bit in my in my presentation I'm going to do for you. Yeah. But do it however you want to do it. <laughs> I, did, I had I did a spectacular burnout of my scientific career. I discovered an enormous amount of sabotage that affects all women. And I spent 20 years working out how to fix it. And basically, that is what's in my book. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you today, or at least the first part of that. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Fantastic. So if you want to, I know you've got some slides, so feel free to share your screen whenever you want to, or I'll just let you go ahead with whatever you want to say. <laughs> right. Okay. Wonderful. So what I'm doing with you today is showing you how to overcome imposter syndrome and visibility fears quickly and easily. And this is something that we just all need because if you're going to be successful at writing and publishing your book, you've got to master the inner game too. It's absolutely essential. So when we start out on our, on our path, we're usually full of dreams and motivation and enthusiasm. We have this great idea of what we're going to do. And initially things go well, but then, <laughs> then you hit an invisible subconscious limit and everything comes to a standstill. And you need to know what to do so you just don't get stuck there. So here's the fact for you. Your subconscious mind is not your friend. And writing a book, I think more than almost anything else, <laughs> will likely freak it out. And if you're not prepared, it can sabotage everything. So in the next half an hour, you're going to discover, firstly, how to spot when this is happening to you. Secondly, why following conventional wisdom can actually make things worse and what you can do to free yourself. Okay, so firstly, a bit about me. How did I come to discover all of this? Well, I was what you would call a high-flying academic. I went to Cambridge where I got a first-class degree, PhD in metallurgy, postdoctoral research fellowship, and then at the age of 26, I walked into what should have been my, my dream job of lecturer in mechanics of materials. And if you're across the Atlantic, that means a college professorship. And and I could do the job just fine, there was no problem with that, but when I walked through the door of that engineering department, it was as if the rug had been just pulled out from under me, my confidence evaporated, and my stress was off the scale, and I stopped sleeping, and I started getting ill, and the thing is that the more, but the longer I was there, instead of it getting better, it actually got worse, and worse, and worse, and worse, and after just six years, I'd spiralled into what I call a spectacular burnout, and I'd not only lost my scientific career, I'd lost my health as well. So I was left with one big question. Why had I reacted with such extreme stress in a career for which I was so eminently qualified and capable? Because looking at the surface, there really was no obvious reason. 
There really wasn't. I couldn't find the answer there. So I had to look underneath into the world of the subconscious. So that led me on an amazing journey into that world to identify what was actually happening and to find the solution. And of course, at that point, I only wanted to help myself and get my life back. But what I discovered was something far bigger. It was a subconscious operating system that we all share. And it was sabotaging women, particularly when they step up in the world. And the more talented and the more motivated somebody was, the more they got undermined. So after 20 years of research into this, I devised a solution and I'm sharing the first part of that with you today. So the first thing you need to know, who needs this knowledge? Well, if you're starting out writing your book, forewarned is forearmed, right? You need to know the pitfalls. If your writing is underway, the closer you get to finishing, the more likely this is to happen to you. Publishing and marketing your book will take your subconscious into new frenzies of stress. <laughs> no matter how confident you start out to start with, I see Lucy's nodding here. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> it's so true. So true. <laughs> and of course, this may already be happening to you without you realising it. So in all cases, having this knowledge is going to help you to complete and publish and market your book quicker and with less stress. So let's look at what's actually happening when you write a book. I think everybody here uh, will agree that our aim in writing our book is to increase our success, our visibility, our authority status, our impact, our money, and you know, maybe you see it as your, your, um, your higher purpose, your, your soul's mission, all of those things, but all of it is gonna be making us bigger, <laughs> bigger in the world. And we think it's a good thing, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. Unfortunately, your subconscious mind doesn't agree. It's got a completely different agenda. So let's look at it this way. Here you are, you're starting out on your, on your path with your ambition, your vision, your desire. You're setting your goals, you make a plan, you take the action, you get the results and you move to that next step of success. And of course it's step by step by step, right? but then you hit an invisible subconscious limit. And why is this? Well, we have limits for practically everything programmed into our minds, but there's no bigger quantum leap than writing a book. There just isn't. Because the whole world will be able to read it. And once it's out there, it's there forever. You'll be scrutinized, you'll be criticized, your visibility will skyrocket. You'll be taken for the expert. You'll have to be holding that position. And, you know, this is, it's scary stuff, right? And your subconscious is going to go into meltdown. And that doesn't matter whether you are conscious on the surface of, of you know, your, your conscious mind is, is really um, confident about it. It doesn't matter about that at all. Your subconscious is doing its thing and it will go into the meltdown. Because what it believes you are doing is forbidden, and dangerous and so it tries to stop you because it's trying to save you it's literally trying to save your life by holding you back now of course there is legitimate stress associated with being out there in so visible a way but trust me your subconscious beast is magnifying it and making it much much worse this is what happens so your subconscious beast triggers under the surface of your mind. And suddenly it creates the imposter syndrome, which includes things like fears, overwhelm, low confidence, stress, anxiety. It can go into health issues. It can be feeling blocked. All kinds of things go into this kind of blanket label of imposter syndrome. But the, the, the result is where we did have a nice clear path between us and success, we now have a huge, great big flipping mountain to get through. And that's why it's like, just can't move forward. The cause is the subconscious beast. The result is all of these feelings that we're experiencing. And it's a vicious cycle. You feel anxious. So you assume it's because you're not good enough. So you doubt yourself and you feel like a fraud. So you hold back more and your stress goes up and it goes <laughs> churning round. And you, know, you can work yourself in, well, down into a huge pit. 
And of course, in this context, it's going to lead to not writing a single word. I absolutely know people who've done that. They wanted to write a book and it's been 20 years later and not a single word has gone on that page. Writer's block, destructive perfectionism, stress and anxiety and meltdowns out of proportion with what's actually happening. The total collapse of your confidence, self-doubt, self-sabotage, illnesses, etc., etc., etc. And it can come right out of the blue just when you think everything is going well. And that is where most people get stuck. So from this point onwards, you have got the upper hand because you are going to have inside knowledge, right? <laughs> so we're going deeper. We're going deeper. Why is it that your subconscious is trying to stop you? Welcome to the iceberg of your mind. So the iceberg is a brilliant way to think about the way your mind works because the tiny bit above the, above the surface of the water, that is your conscious 21st century self with your aspirations, your qualifications, your um, experience, with your entitlements, your rights, and you, you think you can do it. But underneath the surface is this huge, great, big subconscious part. You're totally unaware of it but it is not on the page of the 21st century at all. It is literally anchored into the past. It's running uh, you know, laws and rules and limitations and restrictions that have got nothing to do with here and now. So why is this? Well, it's quite easy to understand really. We and women, you know, everybody, but women in particular, have been held back and restricted and being forbidden from doing things and stopped from outshining men and having control over our money and our occupation and all of this for millennia. It's been ingrained in everything, in the subconscious patterns, in our institutions, in our society. And then suddenly in the 20th century, we have suddenly opens up and in the course of literally two generations, we suddenly have rights and opportunity and freedom. And of course we take it <laughs> about time too, right? But all of those hidden levels underneath just haven't had the time to catch up. They're just lagging into the past. So you and I, we are the women on the cusp because we have the surface freedoms, but we do not have the operating system. So we are dealing with this huge mismatch and I'll get into that in a bit, bit more detail soon. So what's in your subconscious operating system? Well obviously it's an individual thing that there are there are key factors which will which we have in common. So you are being pulled back by the legacy of the past that's held in, in your heritage. So the best way to think about this is to think about say your your great grandmother. Even if you don't know actual details about her life you, you, you'd know what you, you know, you know where she lived or what kind of place it was or what kind of social status she would have had and you know, all, all that kind of thing. That is where your subconscious is going to be or even earlier. So it's factors like you know the social class, economic background, race, caste, depending on your culture, and the biggie patriarchy. Right? <laughs> the whole world labeled, designed, for men, to suit men, labelling everything about us as inferior and us being there as forbidden. So I can talk for hours on this, but I'm going to restrain myself today. But let's just say there's all of this <laughs> dragging you away from what you are wanting to do and capable of doing here and now. Quite simply, we need a, a state-of-the-art modern operating system for our modern lives, and we do not have it we have an ancient clunking old machine. <laughs> and you know what it's like if you try to get an old machine and you try to run top software on it, it's just not gonna work. It's not going to work. And that's the problem that we are dealing with here. In a nutshell, your subconscious mind and you are using completely different benchmarks. So when you were there in your everyday life, wanted to expand your business, write your book, get the interviews, <laughs> all of that, you think it's absolutely fine. Your subconscious, much bigger than you, energetically, thinks you are breaking rules. So here's our assumption. We are feeling a big mismatch. 
from what our subconscious thinks we should be doing and what we think we should be doing. But we don't understand that yet. We just feel a mismatch. And this is what we assume. This is our downfall. We see that we assume that there's a required standard of ability, intelligence, experience, etc. This, this high standard is there and we feel that we aren't ticking the right boxes. So we assume this means we're below standard. So we put ourselves like, like below because we feel this mismatch and we assume it's a negative mismatch and we make the conclusion, I'm not good enough. Your subconscious is believing, you're breaking the rules, you'll be punished. It must stop you to keep you safe and it triggers fight or flight and it gives you valid reasons to backtrack. Now, these are obsolete beliefs, right? They're completely obsolete, but they're programmed in on such a deep level, they're sabotaging us here and now. And I want to make it you know, really clear that this has got nothing to do with your conscious belief system. So I had you know, a real equal opportunities upbringing. I had every opportunity for education, every encouragement to be a scientist, every encouragement to go and beat the men. And I had all of that for my parents and my school. But when I found, looked underneath in myself, it was all there. A woman's place is in the home. I, you know, a woman isn't allowed to outshine a man. All of this, it was hidden in my operating system, even though I had not lived that myself. So it's a, it's a huge, huge conflict that we're dealing with here. But we don't know this. We just feel ourselves being pulled back. So you and your subconscious are going in different directions. It's literally stretching you. It's it's stretching you, putting more and more strain in as you're trying to go in a different direction. So the further you go to that forbidden territory, the more your subconscious tries to stop you. It tells you you're not good enough. You're in danger. You're going to fail. You're going to be ridiculed and humiliated. It triggers this fight or flight. And this is what I call the spider's web of limitation because it's not just one thing. It's as if we're in a big three-dimensional matrix of many, many limits. And women are, are, are restricted by limits on, you know, on money and power and leadership and freedom and occupation and lots of relative limits. So I can earn this much money, but I can't earn more money than my husband, or I can't outshine my brother, or I can't be, have more authority than my male colleague because all that patriarchy stuff is there, saying that we've got to be behind the male in, in all the situations. So what happens is we, as we try to push forward in our, in our lives, we get so far and then the web pulls us back to those subconscious limits and we push forward again and we get pulled back. And even when we break through one set of limits, we meet the next one and the next one. And that's why it's, it, it's so apparent when you're writing a book because it's such a big quantum leap in visibility and authority that it triggers a, you know, a whole plethora of limits, which is why we have the big subconscious meltdowns when this happens. So how, how are we gonna free ourselves from this? Okay, so I'm gonna start with talking about what not to do because this is so, so important. Right, so we've got, we've established the fact that you and your subconscious are going in different directions. Now, conventional wisdom can actually make it worse because you're likely to be told things like lean in, fake it till you make it, push yourself out of your comfort zone and the worst, feel the fear and do it anyway. Oh my giddy aunt. <laughs> yeah, we all hear those, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> can you see that if this is your situation where you're being dragged back because what your subconscious is telling is, is your subconscious believes that what you're doing is forbidden and you're going to be punished and probably put to death for it the more you push into that energy the more the subconscious is going to freak out and the worse you are going to feel so that is exactly what i did in my scientific career i pushed forward i didn't give up i kept on going kept on going and pushed further and further and further and that stress just got went up and up and up and up and after a while your system simply cannot accommodate it all it just can't and something is going to break. You know, it could be your health, as in my case, it could be your career, as in my case, it could be your relationships, it could be all of it. Can I just tell you, um, Anne, that Lucy yeah. Barkas has just said, I didn't have any of these those beliefs about money and men, hence why I am divorced. Um, he did, I didn't. 
So, but what you're saying is that even though we think we don't have those beliefs, we do. So, I mean, what, what, yeah. what, how would you kind of respond to well, Lucy? That is, that is the whole point. The, the operating system is there for everybody. I have tested so many people, I don't even know how many people I've tested, right? And it's nothing to do with what you believe consciously. It's about the conflict which is created. Now, it can go two ways when that conflict is created. The conflict will be there. Now, with some women, it's going to go into triggering everything I'm talking about. With other women, what we do is it's still there. And, and instead of taking us into a, a flight, it takes us into a fight. And we take on a real warrior energy. And the women who, are, who get to the top have done that, but they're still responding to this subconscious operating system, which still says you are forbidden from being there. So I can guarantee that if I had Lucy here and I could muscle test her subconscious in front of you, I would find these beliefs. So for some people, they can be very motivating to a certain point and your, 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 your fire, your um, the desire to prove yourself and all of this will absolutely take you on what you've just described Lucy said, right? Totally, it mm -hmm. does that. And I've worked with a lot of women who have got to that kind of point you know, in really high powered you know, corporate jobs and everything, but, but they get to a point and then it it's, begins to backfire a bit later on for them. Burnout begins to come in and there's more and more sort of conflict and stress and contention in their careers, which is the, it causes them the problem you know, when, when they get to that, that point. So the mismatch is still there. It just depends how it's going to manifest for you. So absolutely, the people who, are, who don't go into fight, but go into the flight, we suffer much more and earlier. But if you are, have gone the other way and you are in that energy of I'm the warrior, you're in the warrior because the subconscious operating system is telling you that you shouldn't be doing it and it's forbidden. So you're going into, right, I'm going to fight through and destroy any, you know, <laughs> anything in my path. It's still there. It's absolutely still right. there. And what oh, happens if you? Um, what happens if I have a I have a really strong freeze reaction? I'm neither flight nor fight, but I really freeze in the space. Of yes, and it, it's actually well. Um, there's the fight or the fight or the the freeze or the fawn is the other one. So it's yeah, these are all reactions of when your subconscious has gone into that that mode, and it depends on who you who you are. But it, the the solution is always the same. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yep, that's, yep. No, that's great. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah, Lucy yes. says, "Ha ha! I was a warrior. Was don't feel it now. <laughs> so that's good news." <laughs> so I mean, um, just a, a quick aside on that. The the whole um, kind of background of my work is that all women have, have had to compensate for this operating system, and we shouldn't have to do that. We should be free to be just ourselves in our own unique energy to not have to do fight or flight instead to do us in gen you know, genuine free empowerment. And so that's by flagging up all of this sabotage, we can then take the steps to put ourselves into that completely aligned energy. Okay, so back to, back to this. So <clears throat> if we, we don't want to stop when it triggers and we certainly don't want to push forwards and it get worse. I mean, I've seen it in myself. I've seen it in more, I mean, more people than I can possibly imagine. Um, and so we need something else, right? We need to understand that beast and we need to take the control back from it. So here is your action plan to vanquish the subconscious beast. So whether you are doing the warrior and thinking you're doing fine, or whether you are feeling the imposter syndrome, getting this bit under control is gonna be advantageous for everybody. So the first absolute key thing is to recognize when a limit is triggered. So here are some of the key things to look for. I'm a fraud, stress, anxiety, or overwhelm that is out of proportion. Fears for no obvious reason, can't take the next step, confidence evaporated, feeling under attack, fear not good enough, or indeed, I could add on here, based on what we've just said, 
the need that the, the, the feeling that you need to attack. I need to attack people before they attack me. You know, I'm, it, it triggers that I have to go here in, in a fighting energy. That was also telling you that this has triggered. So when those signs trigger, it's really important not to take them at face value. Instead, the alarm goes off. You say, aha, I saw that talk in the, in the Abu group. What did Anne say? The subconscious beast has triggered. Okay, so you're receiving negative messages. You're tempted to backtrack. Don't believe them. It's all an illusion designed to sabotage you. So I've shown you this before. This is what we're assuming. It's our misunderstanding. We've misunderstood that there's a required standard that we are not hitting. We're at some much lower level. We feel the inner conflict and we assume it's a negative mismatch and we conclude I'm not good enough. But this is the truth, completely different. The truth is there's a subconscious benchmark which is low. These obsolete limits from history. There it is, completely at the bottom. Whereas you, right, you've gone much too far. You have you know, great ability and great intelligence and great experience, and you have seized the opportunities that we have in this day and age. So you are way above your subconscious benchmarks. So there's a, there's a big mismatch, but it's positive. You concluded you weren't good enough, but the truth is, it's actually showing that you are too good for your subconscious. So let's look at what we are doing here when we write our book. So we start off as a high achieving woman. So like the box on um, the left here. The high achieving woman in her life is much higher than the subconscious, subconscious benchmark because it has the programs, got to stay in the home, support roles only, mustn't outshine the men, leadership is forbidden, no higher education, certainly no PhDs from Cambridge, right? That is there, it's in, it's in us, it's in the men, it's in our institutions, it's in our society, it's hidden. We don't know it's there and we certainly don't believe it, which is why we're here. We wouldn't have got to be a high achieving woman if we'd believed those things, right? That's why it's the high achieving women who suffer because we've pulled away from those benchmarks. And we have this positive mismatch, which we've misinterpreted. But then, right, then you write a book. <laughs> High achieving woman and author, this huge quantum leap into visibility and being scrutinized and being an authority. So this, this mismatch, mismatch is going to just <laughs> magnify off the scale suddenly. So suddenly that the, the difference between you and what your subconscious thinks you should be at just magnifies totally, which is why writing a book triggers it so much. So this is your first game changer and it's a mindset shift. And this in, it, you know, in itself is enough, is enough to bring you you know, out of that negative spiral if that is undermining you. Here it is. So your subconscious mind is telling you lies to manipulate you because the truth is you are safe, you are good enough and you are completely entitled to succeed. You do feel like an imposter because you've gone too far. You've broken through the inherited subconscious limits that are hidden under the surface and you had no idea they were there, but they had you locked there without you realizing it. The fact that you've done it is the proof of how talented you really are. So the woman who is happy to be a housewife and a mother and never have a job, never have a bank account of her own and you know, never do anything other than just do what her husband wants, she will never trigger these because she's obeying the subconscious benchmark. Any woman who is wanting to succeed in the world is going to be breaking those hidden limits because according to the subconscious, you know, anything which is beyond um, mother, cleaner, midwife and secretary is labelled as not for you. You'll be punished if you have this. And so I just want to say this is 
this is the result of thousands of hours of testing on many, many, many individuals. None of this is my guessing or my, me surmising. It's actually been measured. So you are a scientist like, after all. I, yeah. <laughs> this is the proof of how talented you really are. Fears of being visible, they're not because you're in danger. They are illusions. Because the, the truth is the old rules are saying everything you are doing and being is forbidden and there's going to be a terrible punishment if you do that. But that's all obsolete. You can be as amazing as you choose to be. You absolutely can. Now, of course, you know, there, there are genuine fears, but the point is, if, if you're comparing the fear of your subconscious, which is saying you're going to be burnt at the stake for this, right? you're going to die. Whereas the actual fear is somebody's going to not like my book. Someone is going to put, you know, troll my social media. It's unpleasant, but it's really not a big deal. It really doesn't hurt you. And the, the comparison of the fear it triggers in you, the one and the other, the, the, I mean, there is no comparison. When you have this understanding that that huge fear thing is indeed an illusion and the real thing is much, much smaller, that immediately is going to put you into your power. So feeling blocked, feeling not good enough and held back, this is the proof of how talented, motivated and capable you are because it's the proof that you've broken through those limits. And I want you to just take this, really take this on board. Many people don't manage to do that at all, and you have. You just by starting out in this process, you've broken through so many limits. To get where you are at all with your career, you've broken through so many limits. So it shows you know, how you know, persistent and resilient and strong and capable you really are. So the true cause of imposter syndrome, visibility fears, are that we are breaking the barriers that restricted our female ancestors. It's got nothing to do with our abilities at all, nothing. It's in fact quite the opposite. We're feeling it because our abilities are being expressed and we, you know, we are amazing. So that mindset shift is, is absolutely huge, absolutely huge, because the, the worse you feel, it actually means the better you are, quite simply. So the next step is to pull your subconscious mind out of that fight or flight. And this is my pull back your power technique. So what happens when you get into this spiral, what happens is that your, your subconscious gets locked into the fight or flight. And, I'm, and when I say locked, I mean locked. It's like you being like an antelope on the African plain and the lion is approaching, you know, you're absolutely, you, you cannot get your attention off of you. It's just completely um, all encompassing. And that's why when you get into that position, it's really, really difficult to get yourself out of it because it's literally locked there. And the pulling back your power is a way of getting yourself out of that. And when you do that, your subconscious stress goes down, your confidence goes up, you begin to you know, realize that, or your subconscious begins to realize that in fact you are safe and then you can begin to move forwards. So what I'm gonna do is go through this with you. I'm not sure whether I have time to take it, Lucy, do I have, do I have time to um, take people through it a little bit slower so they can actually try it? Yeah, we've, we've got about sort of, 10, 15 minutes, I think, if, if uh, for people who can stay. And if anybody can't, you can always watch it back on the record. So is that is that time enough, Anne? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. OK, so just quickly, what, what you do is this. So you focus into your heart and you imagine there's a wire going from your chest to the situation. So the situation might be the publication of your book, right? And you imagine there's a large, brightly coloured ball on the wire but you don't have the ball. The ball is over there with this situation. And that is the ball of your power. And your focus is all on the other person, on the situation that's causing the stress. And while it's there, you are going to be in fight or flight. So what you now do is, in your mind's eye, you reach out and you grab the ball. And to start with, you can do this actually with your arms if you wish. Grab the ball and you pull it, pull it along the wire back into your chest. And the important thing here is that it's not easy. It's not like, not like that. 
you imagine that it's really difficult. You've got to really pull. It's a really kind of visceral process because that is the force that unlocks this fight or flight. That's the, the key thing. And when you've pulled it back, you hold your attention into your chest and you like, imagine the, um, that, that the colors of the ball, like swirling lights or something, just to get your attention really, really focused on you. And when you do that, when you put your focus, your power then begins to return and magnify and the power of the situation begins to shrink. And that's when your subconscious begins to feel safe. As soon as you've got the ball of your power back and focusing on that, that's when your, your mind will begin to calm down because uh, power is safety. And that's when it'll say, oh, hang on a minute. It's the 21st century. Why do I think I'm going to be put to death for this? Of course I'm not. And the, the, you know, the, the reason, <laughs> reason prevails. And you then feel yourself, um, your stress goes down, your confidence goes up and the fears you know, evaporate. So um, I would you know, normally go through this uh, quite, quite slowly, take maybe 10 minutes on the whole thing, but we haven't really got time for that now. But um, if you do this, so you can, um, if you do this and just do it really, um, just spend say two or three minutes going through the process, focusing on what it is that's stressing you out, following it through, you will absolutely feel your stress and your anxiety relaxing and you feel yourself coming back you know, into control. And when I learned how to do this, I have to say it was completely game-changing, totally game-changing for me. So I think I've already said this, pull your power back, it unlocks your subconscious mind from its fight or flight, stress goes down, confidence goes up, clarity goes up, you begin to feel the truth of your situation and free of that subconscious sabotage. Right, <laughs> caveat here, there is always another limit. This is the lot of being a high achieving woman. Because each step we take in the writing, publishing, marketing process, and indeed you know, in life, in our careers, we will trigger more and more and more limits because each time we are breaking further and further away from those subconscious benchmarks which do not update. God, if only they updated, but they don't. They're just sit, they're sit there like um, set in stone until you work specifically on those. So always be alert to the, the thing triggering, always be alert because you can maybe go through a couple of limits and you're doing really well, then a big one triggers and you stop and it wins. So here's your full thing, your key to success. Learn to recognize those symptoms whenever they come up. Spot those signs. Immediately, the alarm triggers. That subconscious beast is trying to pull me back. It's trying to tell me lies. So ignore all the thoughts that you're inadequate. They are complete illusions. And at that point, you bring in the new understanding, that game-changing mindset shift which is the worse you feel, the better you're doing. In a nutshell, you've broken through those limits. Your subconscious does not like it, but you know what? You're in control. It is not unless you give it that control. And at that point, with that mindset shift, you are in a different space. And there you can then pull back your power from the issue, pull yourself out of the fight or flight, and everything becomes calmer and you can then move forward. And that mountain I showed you at the beginning will just disappear. Now, of course, to go even deeper, you need to change that subconscious programming. And that is absolutely what I can do with you if you wanted to do that. Alas, no time for that today. But you know, we don't have to be a victim of this subconscious programming. We can absolutely change it so that we don't continue to, to um, trigger these, these limits at all. Here's what we want. We want to bring the subconscious up to the 21st century. So there is no mismatch, no subconscious sabotage, no imposter syndrome. That's what we're aiming to do. So just a quick end of story about, about me. So after I left my scientific career, I found myself with a business. I never, never intended it. I ended up there. And I was on a plateau for years, doing loads and loads of training. Didn't know why. 
then I discovered all this about the, the limits, not just police, but the, the, the limits blocking me, learned how to free myself from that. And since then, my visibility and impact and success have totally skyrocketed. And then <laughs> I published my book in 2019. And that process over those months, it took me six months from start to finish, but the anxiety that I hadn't felt in years <sighs> returned off the scale, total blocks, not so much on the writing, but on the, the publishing bit and, and afterwards. And when I tested myself, my subconscious believed I would indeed be put to death for putting that information out there. And it was then I freed myself from that limit that everything got flowing again. So here's what I want to leave you with. Triggering limits, it's normal, it's inevitable on the path to being a published author. There's no way you're going to escape this. But freeing yourself from those limits, that's the key to freedom from the visibility fears and the imposter syndrome. And that's when the imposter has no power over you. And that's the first essential step to you vanquishing that beast and winning the inner game of writing success. And what I've got for you, I've got a few extra things at the end here. So I've got a gift for you, which is a free audio subconscious upgrade, safe to be visible, which will be sharing the link for, for that. And that will start that process of that, that subconscious um, reprogramming, which is, we all need it. Every woman needs this. And of course, the whole process is given in my book, Pull Back Your Power, of course, um, published by Rethink Press. <laughs> so it's all in there. And I've, I've also just put together, um, it's a, a package, it's an exclusive collection of six of my favourite healings, specifically for women who want to really you know, uh, break through the, the things that are holding them back in their careers. And there are six healings on power, money and visibility and voice. Supercharge your success and safety, which I've only just got online this weekend. So if you wanted to go deeper, then this is the perfect way to start. And any questions or if you want to go deep with any of this, my Facebook group is Secret Sorceress. Uh, you're more than welcome to come and join and ask me any questions that we haven't got time for now. Right. <sighs> Wonderful. <laughs> that's, that's amazing, Anne. That's, that's such a lot of um, information and um, support in a, in, a, in a lunchtime learning session. That's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. I like to give good value. <laughs> right, let me, let me unshare. Absolutely, you absolutely have. Um, and lo and lots of people have um, clearly enjoyed this a lot. Um, I don't know if anybody's got any specific questions for Anne now, but I really, really uh, do encourage you to join Anne's Facebook group, um, which is great, but also to try her, I mean, certainly to read her book, of course, um, <laughs> but, but, but definitely to try her, her healings or, or, or check in with Anne about the possibility of working with her, because if you have, you know, if you do feel any of these sorts of issues are quite deep seated with you or you're at a particular stage where they're actually holding you back and believe me this can happen at any age I can tell you or, or at any level of you know so-called success um, Anne has some really extraordinary techniques and abilities um, and it's it's um, you know it's very very worthwhile to to work with Anne so we'll put all the links into um, so yes, yeah, so um, Taruna's saying, should we listen to the audio at any time? Um, uh, um, yes, so, so, so with the audio, the, the, the one thing you must not do is listen while driving because it will absolutely make you drowsy. This is something you must relax for in a safe environment. Having said that, you know, um, some people like to listen to my stuff before they go to sleep because it makes them drowsy. But the thing to do is to you know, listen to it um, two or three times over like a, a week initially, and then come back to it because the more you do it, the deeper it's going to go, and different, you know, and more levels are going to come up. And we, when you then um, have a, a particular issue come comes up for you, you know, for example, you you take another leap forward, and you know maybe you get a really important interview, and that triggers something, or maybe somebody gives you a bad review, and that triggers something. All, all, all these things can come up, but exactly as Lucy was saying, you can be doing so well and have got to such a level of success 
and then you hit a, another limit and it can really come down out of the blue. That's why it's so important to understand the process, even if you don't think it's relevant for you today. You want to have it, yeah. you want to have it um, filed away. So if it's, if it's like next year or five years or 10 years, you say, aha, I remember I need to do something about this that isn't just push forwards. Absolutely. So yes, um, the more you use the audio, it is going to help more and more. So um, Michaela just, says, are the audio um, subconscious upgrades, are they like guided meditations? Well, it's, um, it's deeper than the guided meditation because I'm actually doing stuff, <laughs> sort of quantum level stuff, I like to think about it. Is we're literally going into the mind and we are taking out particular patterns. So say you've got a, a, um, a pattern that powerful women who are visible are going to get destroyed and we all have that and you see that in you know, the way that female politicians are attacked and criticized far more than men for the same kind of behavior like double standard stuff and with the history of you know, women being persecuted and put to death when they tried to step up to the status quo or show any kind of abilities this is a very big thing so you know that absolutely that's that is when you know those patterns are, are going to be there like um well, you know, like a like a like a wave, so like an like electric wave. You see something like that. We are going in and we are cancelling them out to, to take away that that signature of that energy, and then we're putting in new signatures. So it's like putting in the the, the pattern of being, you know, safe and entitled, and that it's water off the duck's back, just you know, off the top of my head. So we're literally changing the, the program. So it's actually a lot deeper than a guided visualization or meditation. It's more like a software upgrade. Yes, yes. That's, <laughs> that's uh, what yeah. I'm calling it. It, it, it is a subconscious upgrade. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, Kieran, Kieran Wade is saying, where can we get the link to the audio? Kieran, we're going to put it in the, um, uh, I'll put it in the uh, title of this, um, this, this post when, as soon as we finish and um, stop being live, it will be there. Um, uh, Michaela says, I read Anne's book in one sitting. I found it really helpful to reflect the content um, when the mansplainers in my life crop up. Yes, absolutely. I think once you, <laughs> once you know these things, once you've read and or well, listened obviously to Anne today, you can't forget them. You can't forget that information and it does make a difference to how you're able to react to um, exactly. the things that trigger you and you don't even realize you're, I mean, exactly as Anne says, you don't realize that you are being triggered into fight or flight, by ancient um, archetypal um, beliefs that you don't think you have. That's the, that's the key thing. You think exactly. you think that you're, you're fine, you're modern, you're, um, you're exactly. equal and all those things, but running underneath um, all those, all those beliefs, those conscious beliefs is this fear that you're going to be, I mean, literally, I mean, I, I didn't believe this when Anne first told me this, but actually it's true where you actually think you could be put to death for this or you could be seriously hurt or punished or you know your life could be um you know badly impacted if you continue doing this this you know uh this bad thing um, by, was, by claiming your own appalled. power i was absolutely appalled when i found those beliefs in me you know a woman's place in the home i mean what this it was so not my belief system or my life, my upbringing at all. But on that deeper level, it was all still, all still there. And when I was going into my, my lectureship job, I would actually say to people, I don't understand. I feel as if I'm going to my execution, just going to work. And then of course, you know, 15 years later, when I had tested this, oh, my subconscious believed I was gonna be executed for yeah. having that authority in that environment over all those men it was so forbidden it's no wonder that I had that burnout it's because yeah. we don't know what's there that it triggers such enormous stress if we knew it consciously from day one we could say well come on that's ridiculous but at day one I hadn't seen my presentation so I didn't know we just feel the anxiety that's created or the stress that's created or the need to fight that's created without knowing where it's come from so it's a real case of knowledge is power yeah indeed so um stella says i filed away my fear of my mom and my brother that triggered a lot of beliefs all thanks to anne i realized this um so that's brilliant thank thank you stella 
Um, I'm, we're going to have to um, draw it to a close. I know I could I could sit here with her and talk and listen to her for hours, <laughs> but um, <laughs> fortunately, uh, we're going to have to leave it here. So Anne Whitehouse, thank you so much um, for today's lunchtime to learning session. It's been really, um, really brilliant. I think um, everybody will have um, who's been here and we've had a big uh, we've had a big audience today um, so I think everybody will have gained an enormously from it and um, um, uh, I'm sure more people will listen to it on catch up so um, we'll make sure to put all the links in and um, once more and thank you so much and um, thank you to everyone for being here um, thanks a lot Anne thank you